Yes, sir. Great. We want to welcome everybody today. We're a couple of minutes early, but I've had technology issues all morning. And I understand I'm not the only one that did. I saw other churches that were having technical difficulties today with Facebook Live. I understood last Sunday, and this was a letter from Facebook, that there were 80,000 churches live streaming at the same time. And it was crippling to Facebook. And they said they were upping their uh, game this morning. And, I and so I am to... glad now that we were able to get on because at 11 o'clock this morning was a mess. And so, but today I have not only my deaf interpreter, but Matthew and Colleen both are on today and Aiden as well, who is sleeping through the prayer meeting. And we are glad for that. And he and Matt and Colleen are on today to tell us about the deaf ministry and how COVID-19 is affecting the deaf community and what is happening in the deaf world that we can know about and we can pray for. If, you, if you've been part of the prayer meetings and several of you have mentioned that you haven't missed a one or you go back and you watch them when you can, but several of you have told me, you know, I have this idea or that idea for one, but I knew for sure we had to get our, our friends on who interpret for the deaf every day. Colleen just volunteers to do this, and I'm grateful for that. Matt and Colleen are missionaries with Worldwide New Testament Baptist Missions, the same missions agency of which I'm a part. Of course, I'm glad to be joined by my wife, Kim, who is here with us. Last week, she was my guest and I was grateful for that. In the days ahead, we have other prayer meetings scheduled. And I think I should just go ahead and tell you, I'm going to go through at least the end of the month, if not further. I think during this season of stay-at-home orders and the uh, confined to quarters, quarantine-esque orders, every state is different, that we should just meet together and pray during this time. And so that's my heartbeat. I'll continue to do this. And I have other guests. I have businesses who've had to let employees go. I have businessmen coming on. I have someone coming on to speak of the economy. Uh, postal workers. I have a, a postal mail, mail carrier who is going to be on. And he's going to talk about how, that's, how COVID-19 has affected his job and what he does. We have others who are coming on as well just to share from their heart. This week, we'll have a college president on. who will talk about how academics are affected by this. We'll have other educators who come on as well. And if you have an area of ministry that you've thought about that I've not approached, let me know. I want to make sure that we cover these. I, on, on Tuesday of this week, I believe it is. Don't correct, correct me if I'm wrong, I guess, later. But uh, we have someone from Rock of Ages Prison Ministry, a friend of mine, who I believe is the International Director for Rock of Ages. How is COVID-19 affecting prison ministry? So we want to be careful and pray for every area we can think of, not leave any out. I'm hoping I have several on my wish list to get as well, and I'm reaching out to those during the period of time. It's three o'clock, so let's go ahead and we'll get started. Welcome to my friends, Matt and Colleen Dundon, who are Deaf Church Planters to Philadelphia. Brother Matt, bring us a word of greeting and share with us what is happening in the Deaf community in regard to the virus. So hello, good morning, everyone. Um, first of all, thank you so much for the opportunity to be here. I just really appreciate that. Um, the Deaf community, uh, definitely has been impacted by COVID-19, um, coronavirus, same as the hearing community. Um, there's been a lot of fear there. There's also, you know, a lot of information coming in. So, um, you know, they did come up with a sign for coronavirus. So it's one hand behind the other. It's because of the shape of the virus itself that represents um, that shape. And then um, as you've seen pictures of it, there's those like kind of spikes all over the virus. So this is the sign that has been come up with for that. Um, and it also, 
shows how contagious it is because it's spreading mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. all through that sign. There's kind of two meanings in one sign there uh, related with that. So some deaf, you know, have made up some jokes about the coronavirus too. Um, for example, uh, in ASL, you know, one huge benefit we have is that, you know, we don't really have to stand apart from each other because we can communicate clearly without speaking. There's uh -huh. no, there's no droplets traveling anywhere. Right. We can just talk with right. each other. So, um, you know, so there's been some jokes going around there, you know, of just less, less contagious among the deaf. Um, yeah. But there's definitely been um, Facebook posts and you know, some GIF pictures of interpreters um, who are interpreting for the governors, the mayors, you know, some of their facial expressions. Um, you know, we try to find the find the funny in it, find sure. a way to make it a little bit more lighthearted given just how serious the situation is. Um, so the deaf community tends to have a bit more misinformation spread um, because we already have less access to information. Mm. Um, you know, hearing can hear it, they hear it first for one, and then they can hear it everywhere. So deaf are always getting that secondhand information. Um, and then there's some deaf Facebook groups related to coronavirus. So I'm a member of them and there's um, several mis misinformation posts that I've come mm. across there of just wrong information. Um, I would say one of the biggest things now that's being discussed is the interpreter issue. At the, at the start of this, um, uh, the governors, the mayors were making a lot of announcements and there was no interpreter there. Um, so now I just found out that in all 50 states, the governors, the mayors that are making announcements have an interpreter with them. And this is the first time in history that we've had that kind of access. So that is a positive out of it. Um, there are several that have an interpreter on a TV screen, you know, kind of how we're doing box in box, picture in picture, um, but some, many of them do have live interpreters with them. Um, one thing now, there are a lot in the deaf community that are reaching out to the White House because right now there is no interpreter with the president, um, you know, with this task force. So, that means that you know every time President Trump gets on and makes these big announcements, they can't understand in their own language. You know, um, some people understand English well enough; they have a good reading level. You know, um, they can go ahead and check out the captions. But for some people, that's just really hard, and so they're missing a lot of what's being announced by the president right now. Um, there are some deaf organizations that have kind of taken over with an interpreter and they've got a picture in picture, um, but, you know, on Facebook and other news outlets uh, have been taking that down because it's against their copyright. You know, you're sharing their uh, content. Yeah, their content. And so, you know, the White House has to have a contract there, you know, CBS should be providing the interpreter, but they're not. Um, so there's just kind of a big discussion going on right now. That's kind of the hot topic because uh, that's one of the biggest complaints at the moment. Um, and I would say the other issue is when you're in the hospital. Uh, right now, many of the hospitals are not allowing a second person in with you. And that includes an interpreter because of the risk of the virus spreading. Um, so, and also many hospitals are overwhelmed already with patients. So then to add that other aspect to it, you know, it's just a lot harder to make accommodations. So, you know, even if you request to have an interpreter, so there's a lot more either um, video relay interpreting, um, okay. which is where they're in a computer and you see them, you know, and that's if they have the technology and they can connect to the internet and it's not a bad signal. Um, you know, if there's any connectivity issues, then the interpreter can't hear, or you can't see them clearly. Um, so the National Agency of the Deaf, NAD, just announced um, that deaf, if you go to the hospital, bring your own accommodations with you bring a pen and paper, bring your cell phone. So um, the hospital used to provide those things for you. But at this point, the system is just so overwhelmed that you have to 
really bring your own pen and paper or cell phone or laptop so that you can be, you know, going back and forth, um, download some sort of speech to text app, you know, or a video interpreter through your phone and they're just hoping that the service would be good enough in the hospital that um, you'd be able to get signals. So this is definitely a new thing. Um, and we've seen with all the masks as well, you know, it's a lot harder to lip read when you can't see through the mask. So, um, so obviously that's one big negative, um, but definitely more serious for the deaf with visual losses as well. Yes. Brother Matt. Um, oh, oh, yes, Mark, go ahead. Um, just one more. Um, you know, on the other hand, deaf, te deaf people tend to be more tech savvy. Um, you know, we're already accustomed to the video con to the video contact. You know, we've been using video and Glide and Facebook Messenger and all that, you know, this whole time. And then Zoom, you know, it's so funny when you have many people on the screen because everybody's signing at the same time. It's just a whole bunch of boxes of people talking. So, and Zoom is designed to follow the sound. So, you know, as you know, it switches to the speaker um, and it does not work that way with the deaf. So, <laughs> we to, you know, we have to set up rules. Um, anyone who's talking next, you have to raise your hand and wait to be called on by the moderator, uh, oh. the host of the group. So uh, they, you know, say, go ahead. And then that person, has their time as the speaker and you know so we we go around that way but um you know just trying to get more creative there yes um and of course you know some deaf uh, are essential workers and they're still going to work they're still going to their place of business um some are not and they're just staying home or teleworking um but there's been that impact as well a lot of the same impact and then a few unique points for the deaf community Thank you very much. What I hear from what you're saying is that being deaf can be lonely because of the lack of information. And then to have fear with loneliness together makes it extra hard. I want you to know, mm -hmm. I am glad that you and Colleen are there for the deaf community. And I want you to know as well that I am grateful for the deaf ministries around the world that are helping get the gospel to these who are there in, and who are deaf. Thank you for your service to Christ. Before we go to prayer, is there another thing that you would like to share, you or Colleen? Um, of course, I mean, for this whole situation, uh, our greatest prayer is just that it would get resolved as quickly as possible. Um, that's the prayer, you know, and for more deaf to have access, yes, um, access information as much as possible. Good. I think the, the only thing for that I'd like to add is that just trying to find deaf churches or Sunday schools or anything that are live streaming is very limited because there's not that many of them, um, you know, and I, I assume the rest of the world is the same way as America, where it's a handful of churches um, out there. So just trying to find I, that. Um, so far, I've found about, I would say less than 20 that um, are actually live streaming every okay. Sunday. So well, you know, just let me put this out to my group who's watching. If you have access to the White House, and several of my friends do, but if you have access to the White House, use your influence to be able to say to the president, we need deaf interpretation so they get the news. Then if you have influence with other churches that are have deaf interpretation, ask if, if you can be involved in helping interpret for the deaf on those churches' live streams. Let's not reach our arms around the world to reach just the hearing and ignore the deaf in our own, our own community. And so I ask you, if you have any contacts, anything that we can utilize to strengthen the good information about COVID-19 and most of all about the gospel. Brother Matt, thank you for being with us today. Would you lead us in prayer? 
Sure. Father in heaven, um, we are thankful for you, for all things, even this situation, um, which has caused us to look to you even more, Lord, to spend more time in prayer, more time with your word. You know, I know that you always use all things for your purpose. Lord, we just pray that you would continue to work in this situation with coronavirus, that it would impact people's lives um, as, you know, as they're getting sick and as some people are passing away, that you would uh, use that for your glory, that they would come to know you. We pray that you would reduce this virus, Lord, give the doctors, the nurses, the hospitals, um, everyone in the medical field, um, give them wisdom as they work with patients as well. And Lord, also that you would help the deaf community mm. that we would be, that they would be looking to you, that we would depend upon you. Yes. Um, that we would depend on you all the more through this situation. And Lord, we thank you so much um, just for your blessing on us, that you are so patient with us for your mercy upon us that we can have hope in you through Jesus Christ, our savior, that we can have less fear. Mm -hmm. um, and we just pray for all those because many don't have that. Um, we pray that this would be the opportunity that they would grab hold of, that they'd redeem the time, be saved, that they'd recognize there can be a hope even in the midst of this and even in the midst of their fear. Just pray as people are thinking about death, as they're facing death, maybe for the first time, really considering that they would really think about this life, how temporary it is, that, and that they would think about the afterward, the eternal as well. We thank you, Lord, for your willingness to hear us. We thank you, Father. Mm. We just pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Father, thank you for this time to create an awareness amongst the hearing about those who are deaf around us. What profound words I heard Matthew pray to say that you hear the deaf. Dear Father, what a great God you are, that you hear those who cannot hear. You see those who cannot see. You speak for those who cannot speak. You are our God. And Father, this virus can be stopped at whatever point you choose. May we never forget the days during this season where we cried out to you every day. May we not forget your goodness to us in these days. For those who are sick today, I pray for your healing hand. For those who are suffering today, I pray for divine relief. And for those who have fear, the fear that is gripping them, like even in the deaf community, when there's already a lack of information and then there's misinformation, dear Father, may they be able to have access to truth and may they be able to have access to the gospel's truth. Thank you for Matt and Colleen's willingness to go to Philadelphia and plant a deaf church. And I pray, dear Father, that as these who are praying with me today, crying out to you for the deaf community, that we will be able to help create influence in these places where their information has to become accurate. Strengthen Matt and Colleen, my dear friend David Bennett at Silent Word and other ministries that are reaching the deaf, every deaf interpreter in every church, give them strength and resolve as a result of the prayer meeting today. For this I pray in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for joining us today. Colleen, many, many thanks for how you're helping this prayer meeting be accessible to the deaf. Thank you. God bless you all. Thank you Thank for you watching today. We'll be back tomorrow at 3 p.m.